Welcome everybody to video 6 of the motion tutorial series. Today we're going to talk a little bit about basic motion. Now the difference, main difference between basic motion and animation is that in basic motion you can get some realistic interactions. So where instead of having something move at a very specific linear uh, amount of time, you would be able to let gravity, physics, and other parameters kind of drive the design and find out where it goes. So let's do this. Let's take these blocks that we've been using previously and let's just add a table to the whole system. So we're going to go create a new motion study and you can probably tell what we're going to do with this one. We're going to switch it into basic motion mode and we're going to let these guys drop using gravity. So I just need to add gravity. We'll do that in the negative Y. See the arrow down here at the bottom right? So it's normal gravity in the negative y, and then we need to add contacts. A lot of times people see this contact group button and they're not sure what this means. I'll show you a quick explanation. If I say I want all four of these parts to contact each other, that means any of these blocks would push against any of the other blocks that they encountered and the table. They would all push against each other all together. So you've got five contact pairs. One, two, three, and then four, and then five. If you say I want to use contact groups, what you could do is say I want these three to com contact against this one. And what that means is these three blocks are in one group, they would not try to contact against each other. They would only really pay attention to this block. So if these guys were all separated by quite a distance, I could use a contact group to simplify my analysis. But because they're all going to be mixed in together, I don't want to use a contact group. I want all contacts to be calculated. Now obviously there is a limit where this very quickly gets out of hand. So if you've got 50 components all contacting each other, you're going to have to start making some hard decisions. Let's click OK on that. And let's just see what happens first. So we'll say calculate. And all right, so we got kind of a weird, a weird behavior. Um, so first thing you want to look at is it only showed a couple frames they were dropping. So obviously our time, the amount of time required to show this is way too high. So we'll grab that top bar, pull it back, we'll do a little zoom in action on our timeline. And let's reanimate this. Okay, we're still looking really fast and we need some more keyframes. Let's do like 200 frames per second. Let's see what that does for us. Oh man, that's still fast. Bonk. Okay. So we'll, we'll do 0.2 seconds and we'll, we'll go 500 frames per second. And I think we're going to be about where we want to be. So they kind of just pop and drop down. Okay, so why did this one not move? And the answer is because it's fixed in place. It was the first one we added by default. Now some things are global changes and some things are local changes that you can apply in a motion study. Unfortunately, fix versus float is not one of them. So if I float this component so that it can drop down, and I go back to the model tab, that is a global change. And you can kind of get the clue that it's a global change because it's not available down here in the bottom. You only have the option up here. So that can kind of sometimes throw people a little bit, but if I float that and I calculate it, everything just drops down real nice and simple. All right, so we've got the basics of maybe a dice throwing uh, analysis started. Let's see what else we can do with this. So I'm going to start back at time zero. And what I'm going to do is just drag these guys with my left or with my right mouse button and kind of get them to a different orientation. Now you do want to make sure they're not interfering because there's contact relative to each other. So that'll create some problems if they're contacting. Let's go ahead and run the basic motion. 
and you see they fall down. Now this is getting kind of boring because these things, you know, they're just kind of dropping straight down. All right, so that's a basic motion setup, but let's say that we want to do something a little bit different. Let's say we want to do a little bit of drag motion. If we grab this part and we move it around, if we were in an animation, we would start seeing key frames and key points showing up in here. But it's not, because we aren't. Everything we change will apply to basically at that time frame or, or apply to time zero. So if I come in here and I say, let's move this up here, and I want to add a keyframe for that part, place a key, nothing really happens. Again, keyframe motion doesn't really work in basic motion. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to play that back. So this is really only appropriate for areas where you want to get a little bit more realistic physics simulation, but you don't have the full motion analysis. Now, basic motion can be a little bit limiting in that respect because you're simply moving things around. So this would be perfect for things like a Geneva wheel, uh, complex mechanisms where contact kind of starts and stops. Uh, in fact, if I take this one and I kind of stack these up on top of each other, and then we animate this, you can start to see how the uh, connecting or the intermittent uh, connections between components can allow you to get a pretty creative and complex study going. We don't have the ability to adjust how bouncy they are. We don't have the ability to set gravity or friction. So those are going to have to be done in a motion analysis, which is what we're going to look at in the next video.